name's Tiffany, pronouns she, her, and today I'm going to talk about LGBTQ rights around the world and also decolonization and how do they interact. Eight countries in the world currently still could impose death penalty for consensual same-sex sexual acts. So these eight countries are Iran, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Nigeria, parts of it, Sudan, Brunei, Mauritania, and Qatar. Three of them have been under British rule and one other has been a French colony. So generally, people think the global south is behind on LGBTQ issues with the Western world often more liberal. But what I'm trying to say is that um, it's not that non-Western cultures are inherently homophobic, but with generations of colonization and the erasure of African and indigenous cultural attitudes or towards sexuality and gender, LGBTQ people and ideas then become Western imports after years of colonization and the erasure of their original cultures. So this quote from a former Zimbabwean president said that homosexuality is a white disease. Whereas um, the then Prime Minister David Cameron once threatened to withdraw aid from Uganda because they were not adhering to proper human rights. But I'm questioning whether Western countries have the right to condemn often African nations that criminalizes homosexuality because it kind of has neocolonist undertones of forcing less developed nations to conform to Western ideals. But also it's ironic because homophobic laws are often a colonial legacy in many countries. British imperialism has a big part to play on homophobia across the world. <laughs> 25% um, of the world's population currently live in a country belonging to the Commonwealth. Commonwealth countries make up of 50% of the countries that still criminalize homosexuality and it's not a coincidence. <laughs> Around almost 50 out of 68 countries that criminalizes homosexuality was once under British rule. Most of the time, colonization has subjected Victorian and Christian values onto native cultures in order to civilize them, not only to impose Britishness, but also to reject the native culture as part of colonization. I would like to read out this quote from British Colonialism and the Criminalization of Homosexuality by N. Zay Han. I think he's an academic at University of Hong Kong. So this quote says that the British also had this conception that the Orient, the non-Western subjects, were overly erotic and oversexed. And that's the reason why they were worried young colonial officers going abroad would be corrupted by those sexual acts, which also infers same-sex acts. As a result of this colonial attitude, a lot of these ex-British colonies have something called the Section 377. So the Section 377 of the British Colonial Penal Code criminalized all sexual acts against the order of nature in 41 former British colonies. It is still now, or was used, to prosecute people engaging in homosexual activity and also for gender people, which were actually recognized in the original cultures such as the Hijra in India or Apwin in Myanmar. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing these wrong, I'm so sorry. Even to this day, Section 377 remains the penal code for Malaysia, Singapore, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and also Jamaica. And the Section 377 has also served as a model for similar laws in Bhutan, Brunei, Kiribati, Papua New Guinea, Tonga, Tuvalu, Samoa, Malawi, Mauritius, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Sudan. It goes on and on, but there's 21 countries here. And it's only now repealed in Australia, Botswana, Fiji, Hong Kong, India, and New Zealand. So as you can see, the British colonialism's influence still applies far and wide to be homophobic. <laughs> Another point I really, really want to hammer home is that non-Western cultures, a lot of them, a lot of indigenous cultures are actually not inherently homophobic. In India, throughout Hindu and Vedic texts, there are many saints, demigods that 
often transcend gender norms. They don't see gender the way the West does. They often have multiple combinations of sex and gender. What happened with homophobia and transphobia in India is that the British administrators came and they didn't really care about local attitudes, about gender and homosexuality, and called the Indian traditional transgender hedra as unnatural. Also in Egypt, one of the oldest civilizations, 2000 BC, you could find like two men in the same tomb buried together as lovers. Most of the deities are androgynous and even the goddess, I can't pronounce this, M-U-T, the goddess of motherhood was a woman with a penis. So take that terms. <laughs> For comparison, the last man to be sentenced to death by hanging in England was in 1845 for engaging in homosexual sex. But at the same time, what is now Uganda, there was an openly gay monarch, this king, who also actively opposed Christianity and colonialism. So I guess he was right. <laughs> in present-day Nigeria, which is one of the countries still has death penalty for homosexual acts. Igbo and Yoruba tribes didn't have a binary of genders and they didn't assign gender like we do at birth. I'm mostly quoting this from this Stonewall article which I'll link in the description below. Basically what I'm trying to say is that simply criticizing non-Western countries for their lack of LGBTQ rights is irresponsible from a British slash Western perspective because global homophobia is very influenced by colonization and the legacy of British imperialism. So I think this is a quote from the founder of UK Black Pride, Lady Phil. She says that marriage equality is not the end all for the LGBTQ fight for equality because dead people can't get married. There's still a lot to do and we can't just leave the other countries in the dust, especially if you're Western and benefit from colonialism and white supremacy. So even currently, there's a systematic British discrimination against LGBTQ refugees. Um, you may not know, but the Home Office refuses a lot of LGBT asylum claims, and so many of them are from ex-colonies. What the Home Office does which is so problematic is that they often make these LGBT asylum seekers prove their queerness and their gayness, which is so not cool. And there's just, there's just so many things right there. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that race plays a part in this. And I think it's pretty rich of often white British people, judges, to tell black LGBTQ asylum seekers how they feel and invalidate them and tell them that they don't look gay enough or because they are lesbians who were all previously married to men that they don't count. You can't just make people prove that they're gay. <laughs> so that is so not cool and we should work on that. Anyway, this is my entire rant. I found some charities that do work to support these people around the world. LGBTQ asylum seekers or LGBTQ people of colour, black LGBTQ people who are often from cultures or nations which were ex-colonies and need your help, especially if you benefit from white supremacy. Kaleidoscope Trust has this thing called the Commonwealth Equality Network, which I'll link in the description below. And they do a lot of work with Commonwealth nations and their fight to equality. UK Black Pride supports a lot of black LGBTQ people and LGBTQ people of colour who are often refugees or immigrants from colonies and UK Black Pride support them and focuses the work on them. Also, Stonewall, obviously. Um, I also found this thing called the UK LGIG, so the Lesbian and Gay Immigration Group. Basically, what happens right now is you seek asylum as an LGBTQ people person. 
you get detained in some immigration centre and currently in the UK I don't think there's any law to protect these people and often they get detained there for ever and ever and the LGIG has funded lawyers to help these people and to rightfully seek asylum in the UK. Um, a lot of the links will be in the description as well as all the articles I've read which I think are good that you should check out in the description as well. So basically to fight for equality we need to decolonize. Remember that black lives matter, black queer lives matter obviously, black trans lives matter and we all play a part in helping our black LGBTQ siblings and make the world a better place. <laughs> Happy Pride! You can find us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, here on YouTube obviously. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. You can find me I guess. I think there will be a link in the description. But yeah, happy Pride! I would apologize for my accent uh, or for reading from a script most of the time but also I wouldn't because colonial education hey <laughs> bye